The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. All right. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. This is the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broadway, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Let's take a look here at the FTSE first, and then we'll take a look at the German DAX. You can see that they're completing some uh, ABCD patterns, especially the FTSE. The FTSE is the one that is the clearest, that there's a potential top here uh, in the FTSE, whether that's going to be correct or not. We'll have to wait and see. Let's move on to something that everybody seems to be interested in and I made a horrible mistake on and that is getting everybody emotionally involved on the long side of this gold market. I know the biggest problem that we had here is the fact that we were short for $56 on the downside, which was good. The problem is now everybody says, what's the next thing that's on the menu at this restaurant? And that's the problem with trading, folks. You're always looking for the next trade, and everybody's expecting it to do what the other one did. And they don't always do that. We've been fortunate here because we were able to buy some hogs down there at the 73 level. Unfortunately, we got out of them at 81 before they made their way to uh, 98. Um, there's an example of uh, you think you, you're going to wait to buy it on a little pullback, and the next day they went limit up and they left you at the uh, proverbial altar. But that's the way trading is. Now, I am still bullish the gold. I'm waiting for a couple of things uh, to see if they're going to unfold. I was rather surprised that we didn't go limit up on Monday because of that head and shoulders pattern that we were looking at in the gold market. But we did make it a little bit lower low below the 1270 um, level. We're only trading around 1272 now, so we can easily go down and make new lows. That's what I'm waiting for is to see if we're going to get to that final level that uh, we've been talking about here at uh, for the last uh, – well, the at least the last two weeks, and that level comes in between uh, 1260 and possibly even uh, 1255. Whether we get to that level, we'll have to wait and see. Silver has held up relatively well. Uh, we did make a bottom down there. It's only rallied 10 cents, you know. So we're seeing that. Yes, David. You're, David uh, White just told us that a lot of the gold miners tested their lows uh, yesterday on very light volume. And, and David, that's one of the things that I've been watching because of the, the incredible pattern that we had in the, the XAU. Uh, we did go a little bit lower here on Monday uh, and uh, just a tiny bit, little, little bit lower on uh, Tuesday. So we're still uh, right around that 72 level in the XAU, but it's completing the ABCDs. It's done all of that. The problem was I really felt that you know, here, here's where the problem lies is you get tied up uh, with you know the people that you're dealing with and you get emails from people and you get to know them and they're very nice and they tell you their stories and you get to meet some of their families and stuff like that. So you get emotionally locked up with that. And I had this same trouble at Drexel Burnham, folks, and I had to fight that uh, uh, a lot because you know I would have people that would uh, – you know, be uh, incredibly aggressive, and you had to, you know, slow them down and stuff like that. And one of my favorite customers was a guy that made a lot of money in the jewelry business, and uh, he was a diamond merchant. And of course, he was really used to speculation, but he was incredibly bearish, uh, you know, a bull <laughs> bearish uh, T bills and T bonds, and he was on the wrong side of the market. And uh, it was T bills, not T bonds, and uh, he was out about oh eighty thousand dollars. And uh, finally, he came in one day and he gave me a check for a quarter of a million dollars and completely reversed his position. And I, you know, I didn't say a word because it's his money. And uh, within about four weeks, he had get, got everything back and continued to ride it for. Wow, at least another year or so, and he made a great deal of money. This is a, a brings back an interesting point. We'll get to the gold in just a second, but 
One of the things when I went to work for Drexel Learn Burnham Lambert, it's a bro it was a bo boutique firm, and it was they specialized in certain products, and they had a very elite clientele. They they really did. They had a lot of politicians. Well, that's not the elite part, but they had a lot of uh, movie uh, movie people, uh, and not just the the uh, actors. They had uh, directors and stuff like that, and they also had. Uh, a lot of sports figures and uh, people that were uh, popular in the neighborhood there of uh, Southern California, and a lot of people were in the news. The uh, the uh, the boys from uh, Texas, uh, my golly, uh, oh boy, oh boy. Let me think for a second. What, Mr. Z, tell me the names of the guys. Uh, the Hunts. Thank you very much, David. God bless you, boy. You got such a good. But anyway. Uh, uh, Lamar Hunt was there, and Bunker Hunt, they traded uh, out of Drexel, but they were out of the uh, uh, the Dallas office. Uh, and so, you know, they had, they had just a lot of people that, that went through Drexel Burnham. But when, when, you, when you sit down to talk to them, one of the things that they said was, look, our customers are accustomed to losing money, and our, custom, our customers are uh, accustomed to making money. The one thing they're not accustomed to is losing all their money. And as long as you don't do that, you're going to do just fine. And so when I first started with them, I set a, a limit of 20%. I said, if uh, we lose any accounts that uh, are down more than 20 cents, we'll stop trading, send them the money back and give them the, uh, the choice of either continuing at another time or uh, moving on, and so we did that. I, I didn't have to hit that very much, but mainly because I was long gold and silver and kept going up. But I had a, I had about a half a dozen customers, and so did Twentyman, that, that liked to call their own shots. These were professionals. I mean, these guys, you know, they were they were big hitters, and a few of those, you know, you get get to know them very well, and that's part of the problem. So let's get back to the gold market here, folks. Here's what I see as we're coming in today. We're still looking uh, for a buy in here. Here's what I was looking at yesterday. I, uh, I, I canceled this uh, right before the opening. Uh, well, long before the opening, and uh, I was going to be buying it at 2098. Now, we closed it, I believe, 2081, and I'm still going to be looking at maybe sometime today I will be buying the gold. I want to buy it on strength. I'd like to see that gold get above the 1280 level, and if we get that, then I'll have a pretty good idea that that low is in. Now, we've been down 10 days since this last high was made, so that's a pretty bearish sign. So I'm watching that. I'm also watching the possibility, you know, that silver could actually get down to that 1440 level. And I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but, you know, I've been the, – here's the, here's the problem. See, I get attached to this stuff, and if I buy it here and it goes to 1440, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's going to make me look kind of silly, right? Well, I look silly a lot anyway. But anyway, that's, that's what I'm going through. I want to get you the middle part of this. And finally, I wanted to take a look here at the platinum because platinum is – one that's got the most bullish of all the patterns. And if you'll take a look at this, we went up and we almost made a double top here on Friday. And what did we do? We came smashing back down again, dropped another $25 to the downside. And that sets up an ABCD pattern right down to the old breakout level at uh, 879. So uh, there's another one that I'm watching right there. So the timing is just about right. And I don't know if it's going to, but I'm not going to do it again. Uh, someone asked me the question, you know, uh, on an email yesterday. He says, "Why do why do you spend so much time discussing this gold? Because you've been, you know, really bearish, and you picked fifty six dollars an ounce out of it. Now you're worried. Well, I'm just trying to do the best job I can." Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a, a little article in the um, den today I got from one of our friends up in Canada uh, about uh, Matsumoso's son, the guy that uh, runs that big company. I forget the name of the place, but uh, he was very bullish uh, Bitcoin, and uh, he uh, he got out of it at uh, – he bought it – excuse me, he bought it at 19000 and he wrote it all the way down, and he just recently took a loss of $120 million on it. Well, there's a guy that's got a lot of money, but, you know, he made a mistake on something, and you got to get used to that, folks. Mistakes is what we do here. You know, you, you if you think you're not going to do this without mistakes, you better revalue, you know, what you want to do for a living. Don't open a restaurant, but maybe being a prison guard or something like that because uh, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Uh, you're going to get out too soon. You're just going to do all those four, those four fears that we have all the time. But uh, you can still make money if you keep your losses relatively small and recognize your mistakes as quickly as possible. So that's it. That's, that's correct. David White just posted in there uh, one of my favorite quotes from uh, Roy Longstreet. There's no mistake in being wrong. The mistake is in staying wrong. And all also, Roy said, the first mistake teaches, the second mistake kills. So when you make that first mistake, whether it's a bad trade or not, SoftBank, thank you very much, David. God, David, you should sit next to me here. You're like having a Google you, – you must be a Google man, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, that's the thing that you've got to do is try to correct your mistakes as near as possible. And that's what I'm trying to do in the gold. I realize that I got out of the short a little too soon. That's okay. I'm, you know, I'm – fine with that, but I do want to get along this, and I will get along it, but I might have to buy it on strength, but I'd like to buy it 
if it gets down to that uh, 1260 uh, to 1255 level and that silver gets to 1440, then I'll drink old Walter in, hook up the wagon, and maybe buy an ounce or two. But anyway, that's what we're paying attention to this morning. So we'll move on to a couple of things. The stocks made new highs yesterday and everything except the uh, the New York Stock Exchange Index. It went up to the 78% level. Uh, didn't really go very much. The other thing is, is that many of those S&P stocks, uh, they're saying they made new highs, but uh, you know the reporting that I see is that you know only 15% of them made new highs. I don't understand where these statistics come from, but that's what they report. So I'm just looking at the charts. I watch those bar charts, and there's more buying. Prices are going up. There's more selling. Prices are going down. So that's the key to what we're looking at here today on Wednesday, the 24th of April. So we'll watch this uh, very, very closely as we go through some of these other charts that we want to look at today. Uh, if you'll remember, we were watching the stock of Qualcomm last week uh, for a potential of a – just one second here, folks. I've got to uh, get this up here for one second here. And I want to get Qualcomm up here to, just because it's got a chance to do something that would be a really great trading opportunity because the news is so bullish on this stuff, and yet it's not going anywhere. So uh, I just wanted to get it up here to this level here. Up, oh, it's already at vile. I don't know. It's it's okay. All right. Yeah, it's gapped up again. So this is uh, this is good. So we're we're back up to that 87 level. Hold on. See, ah, this is what I wanted to see. Hold on just a second. This is what I wanted to show here. There we go. All right. Here's the pattern that we were looking at in Qualcomm. And the whole key was we were looking at the 127 to possibly come in at that 82 level. And you can see that we gapped up yesterday, uh, took it up to uh, 88.50. Now, that takes it up a little bit higher. We'll take it to the uh, – 1.618 expansion level, but uh, this you can't do anything with this until it starts down. That's the whole key was that it had the close in the lower part of the range. In other words, right on the low of the day, and you short it on that day, and if it doesn't gap down the next day, you could have a problem. So if you're going to trade a, a potential island reversal like this, the market has to close. Like today, it's trading at 87.04. It has to close at around 84. And if it closes at 84, you can sell it right on the close. And then tomorrow, if it gaps down, you've got a nice winner. But if it gaps up, you got trouble and you got to get out of it. So it, it's a not a bad pattern because it is a three-drive pattern. The 1.618 number comes in at $90 a share. But uh, that's what we're watching here. You have to be uh, make sure everything is lined up. You know, everything didn't line up there because it didn't close in the lower end of the range. That was the key of the whole thing is you want to see that there was some type of reversal, you know, moving at that particular time. Now, we, we've just made uh, some uh, lower lows here. We haven't gotten below the 11, 111.60 yet in the euro, but we're very, very close. This is going to be a real interesting day here uh, in the uh, – in the euro because we're, we're attempting to uh, break into that level again. We're now trading at 111.85. Uh, Let's get this up here so you folks can see what this looks like uh, on the uh, weekly chart because going below that level is going to set up a potential of getting down to that uh, 106 level. Now, we could also just take out that 111.60 level and reverse because, you know, there's going to be a lot of people – technical people, much like myself and a few of the people here at TFNN are looking at that number, and that might be just like a magnet. So keep an eye on that. It's going to be interesting. You need it to get down there with gusto, and I mean gusto means another 20 pips below you know, 111.60. That's what I would be saying. Yes, this would be a, a major breakout. The dollar index, we've talked about this uh, over the past weeks, uh, the fact that we're, we're heading up, and we still are heading up. Uh, with no big surprise there. We look like we're heading up to that 98 level eventually. We're trading at around 97.50, I believe, today. And it doesn't take much to pop it up there to that 98.20 level and uh, break through that double top area. And then we'll see what it does at that point. The, the Australian dollar was one of our early trades of the week. If you remember, we talked about that very 
very well early early on Sunday, of course, uh, Monday, but that was one of the things that we were looking at for the Australian dollar to break down. And now uh, you can see we're trading down to that 70, uh, 50 level and lower, which means that we could be making the bigger ABCD down here, and that's going to threaten. It's our fact. It's already threatened that head and shoulders pattern because it could not get above the 7250 level. That's why this ABCD pattern that we had last week was so important at 72. Now we're 150 pips lower, and uh, everybody's saying, hmm, what happened? Well, the, what happened was that ABCD pattern up there. That was a perfect Gartley at 7205, and now we're heading down uh, to the, uh, looks like we're going to break below 70 here. Breaking below 70 takes you down to 68.95, and boy, that would also be a little help to the dollar also. It would be very interesting. Now, there is one that we've missed, and this is the one that is just, uh, this is one that drives you crazy. We talked about it yesterday to watch it very, very closely. Someone even called in about it, the one call we did have, and that was to buy this darn thing at 129.10. Well, <laughs> the low was 129.15. We didn't quite get there yet. Now, I haven't double-checked it yet this morning, but I'm going to try to do that right now to see if I can find this. And if you'll give me one second here, I will get it ready. Let's hold on one second. This is... Uh Okay, bear with me here, boys and girls, and I'll get this ready here right now. We're trading at uh, we're trading at 129.39 right now. I would still be a buyer of this British pound at 129.10. That's 20 pips from where we are, so that's what I would be watching. So let's pay attention. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, I posted the chart of the Australian dollar. You can see what's happened here after uh, it broke that little trend line that was there. And it uh, looks like we're heading down, uh, you know, considerably lower. This will be a very interesting day in the New Year, in the U.S. dollar and the euro because it's going to make a test here uh, this morning, and we're going to see if it can hold this level uh, or not because it's very, 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 very important in the euro and also on the dollar on the upside. It might be affecting the gold market too, but I'm not uh, really sure. Now, there's been some news this morning about Qualcomm. It's been updated by uh, upgraded by one of the big firms and they're looking it's going to go higher boy does this remind me of uh, old old days back in December of 1999 uh, I'm sure it was 99 yeah, well I'm not sure of anything but I'm pretty sure it is about 20 years ago I was invited to go to uh, uh, California for a, uh, a New Year's Eve party with some of our friends from Drexel and uh, uh, old friends from the neighborhood so I went over there for that and on that uh, that Friday uh, before uh, I believe I was believe it was a Friday before I had a uh, I was short some Qualcomm I didn't do many short sales in stocks at that time but that was during the 2000 run-up so I was uh, involved with it and I had sold I'd sold 100 shares of Qualcomm at, uh, I believe, I think it was around $599. It was a 300, uh, a three drive to a top pattern on the hourly charts, and you know, everybody was extremely bullish. And uh, right after the close, a young man from, I don't remember the firm, and I can't quite remember his name. He's still on CNBC, and uh, he uh, upgraded it to uh, $750 is what he upgraded it to. So here I'm short 100 shares, and I had a really good year in 99, and I was trading for the Saudis, uh, friends of Bill Meridian, one of them had come here to visit me, uh, staying at the Canyon Ranch and opened an account, and I traded with him for several years until he, no, it was not Henry Blodgett. Um, uh, I'll, I'll think of it in just a minute. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I sorted it. And so I, I was going to figure I was going to be out about, uh, you know, close to what, about 50, no, about 100 grand, I think. And so I called up and I, I told uh, the, the guy that was handling it, um, Amir, I said, look, I got a problem. He says, you don't have any problems. You had a good year. What's going on? I told him. He said, don't worry. What are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to see the opening price. And if it's, uh, you know, uh, below the opening price in the first hour, I'll keep it. If it's not, I'm just going to pitch it out and call it a year. And he said, okay. Well, what happened was uh, the call on the stock was like 80 higher, 100 higher, one of those deals. It opened about uh, $20 higher and then re reversed and dropped about 150 bucks over the next uh, few weeks, which started out the year pretty good. But I remember Qualcomm from that and also, I remember Qualcomm from the very beginning because one of the gentlemen that we were visiting over in California had a gardener there in San Diego. And the gardener kept saying to buy this stock, who's a little Mexican guy, Henry from uh, – well, Sam Henry, not Henry Blodgett, but his, he was from uh, Tijuana, and he would come across and do all of his work, and then go home to Tijuana. He had a whole bunch of customers, and he had several several little trucks of people that did it. But uh, he was handling the guy that started Qualcomm, and the guy from Qualcomm would tell him to you know put all the little extra money that he had, you know, into the uh, into the Qualcomm stop. And so he did it, and kept doing it and doing it. And then one day he showed up and said he was retiring, and uh, he had sold sold all of his Qualcomm stock and had enough money, you know, to uh, live uh, what he thought was going to be the rest of his life. And he moved back to Mexico. Never heard from him again, but that's what uh, 
that's what uh, that's what happened. But uh, that was a long time ago. But I certainly remember that story. Okay, you don't hear those good stories very often. A lot of times you hear some bad ones, but that's neither neither here nor there. Okay, let's move on and take a look at the stock market, folks. Uh, you know, we we are up in an area where let's just get the uh, the Dow Jones composite. I mean, the Nasdaq up here because we made a new high. Now the sixty-four dollar question is: This going to be a major top up in here. My guess is it's going to be, it's going to take some type of a pullback for them to push it through with a lot of gusto. But that's it. Uh, which which half do you have, Ruby? You want to look at palladium? Are you long or are you short? What's the story? I don't really know. But I'll I'll let's we've got time here for you, Ruby, because you give us the silver. Let's take a look here and we'll see what the palladium's doing. I'll give you my two cents worth. And we'll see what's uh, going on here. Oh, there we go. Now we got this thing rocking and rolling. Hold on one second. Let's get this uh, palladium up. Palladium starts with a P, I believe. Okay, P A D. Boy, I got so much stuff in here. I don't even know what to do. There we go. All right, we are trading. Oh, this thing's a sale. Uh, P A is palladium, correct? This is. Uh, I, I don't. I don't want to be long. Well, I don't know. It's a. Uh, just give me one second here, Ruby. I want to get the right, draw the thing and see. We've only been able. There we go. See what we've we've only been able to make a three eight two retracement here. It's okay to be long here, no question about it. But I would not let it get below uh, thirteen fifty. That's you know forty seven bucks, uh, around two grand from where we are right now. I don't know if you want to risk that or not. But if you want to be really safe, put the stop below today's low at around thirteen uh, seventy. But you really got to get it above 1420 in order to get it moving here. Because on the long term, you to see on the long term weekly, if you look at this, this is even clear on the long term weekly that you made that long term uh, 1.618 expansion up there. We talked about this several weeks ago up there at that 16 uh, or 1560 uh, level. Now, then you backed off, you dropped uh, 250. Uh, dollars, you stop, you know, pretty where you, where you should have, right at your 382, and then you've rallied to the 382, but you've got to start getting it to the upside. Now, I'm I'm bullish. To, well, there we go again. Get the old. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I feel relatively uncomfortable <laughs> that the gold, silver, and platinum are getting ready to go higher. So that might pull palladium up. I don't know. That's my two cents worth. Never traded it. I won't trade it because it's just too darn thin. Uh, it's only got an open interest of around 3,000 contracts, and uh, believe me, that is uh, a recipe for some really wild stuff to, uh, you know, pay uh, attention to that. So I would keep a uh, very, very close eye uh, on that one for sure. So th those are the main ones that, as far as I can see in the metals, that I would not trade that one because it's just too darn thin. I got to stay away from that. All right, let's move on to the next one that we have another question on. And that is the uh, the uh, Microsoft. Uh, no, it wasn't Microsoft. Shut the front door and raise the rent. It was Netflix. And I'm not even sure about the net the Netflix itself. But if you'll give me a second here. Uh, now, it was Google. Shut the front door. Just a minute here. These there we go. You can see here that Google just went up and almost made that perfect butterfly pattern up there at that 1240, uh, 1250 level. I don't know where we're trading in Google right now, but uh, 1250 was the number we were looking at. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be turning from there or not, but that tells you if you're trading a $1,250 stock, you don't have to risk more than about 20 bucks on that because of the fact that it, it's going to stop right there or not and that's a very small amount you know that's only uh that's less than one percent if you're going to be looking to trade that so let's take a little break here and i'll get back and when someone's asked a question about microsoft and i'll cover that after the break If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. 
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, we're taking a look now at the uh, uh, chart of Microsoft here. Softy, you know, we had a 1.27 expansion up there at 122. We're now 125. It looks like it's going to go up to the 1.618. It's completed the ABCD. That's no question about that. At the 123 level, we're $2 above that. But that is a completed ABCD pattern on the weekly chart. That's uh, very interesting. Now, the next one we're going to look at here is Netflix, and that is a much easier one to look at. And let me explain to you on Netflix because this is a very interesting pattern. First of all, let's always remember, folks, go back to January the 4th when the stock market was down 600 Dow points and, and uh, Netflix was up on the day. Uh, we, we talked about that that day because, my goodness, you certainly don't want to be short a stock that is facing all that selling and nobody wants to sell it. I mean, it's uh, it's really, really a bullish stock. And you can see the next day when the market turned, you know, Netflix gapped up and it kept going and going. But we're really in an interesting spot now for a low-risk short sale in Netflix if you have that interest. We're setting at the 78% retracement of the high that we made back in July. You'll also notice between March in April, where we are now, we have a beautiful three-drive pattern. The first one coming in at 368. Drive two comes in at 378. And we just finished the uh, third drive at 384. We're now trading at 380 and 38030. So you only have to risk about three dollars. Well, two dollars above that. So your stop would be at uh, 386. So you wouldn't have to risk very much. And your profit ob objective on that would be more than $25 a share. So that's a four to one risk reward ratio. Uh, it also has that really nice ABCD, as you can see with the red uh, Thunderbolt pattern there that came down to the 344 level. And uh, But it's uh, very low risk at this point. It might not work, but that's uh, 
that's the type of trade that you're looking for because you can control your risk so nicely. Uh, take a look at the uh, November, December period, folks, when it's making the three drive to a bottom pattern there. Uh, that's you know what we're really looking at for the gold and silver to do. It hasn't completed yet, but that's uh, well, it could have completed. We don't know yet, but uh, you'll notice that that three drive pattern is very similar to the three drive pattern we're seeing here on the top. So sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work, but that's the whole key to it. But right now, if I had to put a uh, small wager on something, I would look to being short Netflix and uh, putting a stop at 386. So you're risking six dollars. That's less than one percent, which is really, uh, really amazing. So we'll see how these things uh, end up uh, today. But that's what we're looking at early this morning. Uh, let's take a quick look at the Treasury bonds. I believe we just completed a 382 retracement in the Treasury bonds this morning, and uh, well, we're right there right now, 147.06. So we'll be watching that one uh, kind of closely to see. Excuse me, what's happening with that? So uh, we'll watch that there. If we get above 147.20 uh, in the Treasury bonds, that would most probably tell us that uh, we will most uh, look to uh, be a, uh, uh, it might go a little bit higher than that. But the bonds look very negative uh, on the short term and especially the long term. They're really uh they're really quite, uh, you know, quite negative. So we'll see what we're having. We're trading at 147.07 now uh, in the Treasury bond. So we'll see if that's going to uh, turn around this level or not. We we don't know, but this is a this is a 1.27 expansion of the high that we made two days ago. So we'll see what's happening. The uh, one other question someone's asked is about the crude oil. There's a lot of resistance up there at that 66.50 level, folks. There's a 1.618 expansion on the four-hour chart. Several of you folks sent me that to remind me. That was came in at 66.60 and uh, didn't hit the devil's number, 66.66. It only got to 66.60, which is three sixes. Anyway, let's keep an eye on that because it'll be an interesting one also. One other one that we're looking that has a slight chance, and I do mean slight here, and that is the grain markets are just getting hammered again. We've got the soybeans have broken down again, and they keep going lower and lower. We tried them yesterday for a nickel. Uh, they didn't work, so we're going to wait and see uh, how it ends up, uh, you know, the next uh, week or so. I'm not going to do it this week because it'll have to take some type of a monster reversal here, either today, Thursday, or Friday, which I don't expect that to happen. But there's a possibility that we could be bottoming within the next week or so uh, at this level. The corn's made a, a, a double bottom to the downside and uh, broke that uh, 360 level uh, in spot July corn, still holding relatively near that level, but uh, it's getting very, very close. So we'll see how this works. Anyway, as we move through some of these things, uh, we'll have a you know better idea of what's going on today. Now, I'll, we'll give you a little bit heads up of something that I've been watching, been doing some research, of course, with the artificial intelligence. And I wanted to show you, this was the forecast that we had for the uh, – the market for the stock market in, in when we were in the European session. I'd want to get this up here. Uh, you can see it closed here about 8 o'clock our time before the S&P opened. And what we were looking for uh, today was to see if we had this type of a move going on in the stock market. So far, it is moving in that direction. So it moved down till around 12 o'clock, and then we should get a rally of about two and a half hours toward the end of the day, if in fact it works that way. Now, we don't know if it's going to continue, but that's uh, another one that we're watching. And the other one to really kind of keep an eye on, and this is just, you know, sort of experimental, and this is the euro, because we're, we're down here near death's door in the euro, but as you can see here, the forecast that we have is at around 10.30. In about another 50 minutes, if this euro is right there at that level and, and has just made new lows and hasn't turned down dramatically, there could be a big reversal uh, in the euro at that time. Now, this is you know what we say uh, with double quotes, highly experimental, and don't it's not for the faint of heart. So uh, keep an eye on it. It's just a timing thing. It has nothing to do with trend or anything like that. It just says at around 1030, there could be a potential trend change in the euro. That's based on some patterns of of uh, the pattern recognition variety that we looked at over the last 30 days, and it matches them up using artificial intelligence. And uh-oh, we have Beverly on the line from Princeton. What can we do for you, young lady? 
Well, in my in my former life, I was 10 years on a dairy farm in Wisconsin, and we raised, you know, oats, corn, whatever. And uh-huh. what I don't understand is with all this flooding in the Midwest, I'm talking Iowa, Nebraska, parts oh, yeah. of Wisconsin, totally underwater, how yep. can these grain prices be going down? Those farmers <laughs> will not even be able to plant this year. And I know in southern Indiana, where I'm from, uh, you know, Beverly there, uh, my good friend Dougie, he's got a thousand acres, been in the family for 150 years, and he said he's he'll be lucky if he gets 10% of his corn crop in, and, and a lot of his uh, bottom land, you know, near the, the Wabash River there is, uh, he's not going to plant it this year, he's just not going to be able to do it. So that's, uh, I agree with you, I don't know what's happening. You, you want to hear my 10 cents worth? I'm a conspiracy theorist, you know, in, in my second okay. life. But I think they're pushing these grains down so that China can buy them really cheap. And then yeah. uh, just like the old Russian grain bro- robbery in 1972. And I that was, was there. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I was on I, the farm then. Yeah. I'm looking for a bottom. I'm just waiting. Uh, we didn't have anything coming in on the full moon on the 20th, which I thought it had a chance. I took a nibble at soybeans yesterday for a very, very small loss, and now I'm just waiting for uh, another expansion to the downside, you know, to see what it could possibly be. But uh, you can't try to catch a falling knife in these markets, dear. It gets a little sharp, you know. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks for calling in. You bet. I really appreciate it, Beverly. Thank you. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, we're in the home stretch here. As we look at these markets today, the keys to watch, of course, are the euro, 111.60. We're trading at 111.93. And also to keep an eye uh, on this British pound, it's got a lot of support at that 129 level. It certainly does. Uh, the Australian dollar is already breaking down. The Japanese yen is doing absolutely nothing, as is the Canadian dollar. But if we keep an eye on this uh, euro and the British pound, I think those are where your probabilities are for some really good moves if we start to get them. If that euro closes below 111.60, folks, that means that dollar is breaking out, and that means that the U.S. dollar stuff is going to be more expensive. That means grains and all the other stuff, so that could be something that's going to weigh on the grain markets even more because that means the dollar – being expensive when people buy it they've got to convert it to dollars and that makes it more expensive and that could do this so yeah we need the dollar to uh, to at least the euro to hold this level uh, if we're going to get lower prices to possibly get some demand going in the uh, in the grain market because uh, even though we have a lot of water there right now across the the, the, the wet Midwest and stuff, this could dry out quickly. We can still have bumper crops, but we've had four bumper crops in a row, and we usually get one or two uh, at least uh, scary things happen during the year, so we'll see. So keep an eye on the bonds. As long as we don't get above this 104.70 or 147.07 level, it looks like uh, we could be turning down here. That's the 1.27. We've had a small rally here for the last day and a half. We've rallied about a uh, one full handle, and uh, that's what we're keeping an eye on here with the uh, Treasury bonds. So those are the things that we're looking at today. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless, and we'll see you on the flip-flop tomorrow.